questions for reflection. The author of the letter to the Hebrews is using the story of God's people Israel in the desert wandering because they had turned their hearts away from his law and away from his loving plan. As a result, they were unable to enter into the rest of the Lord. In its explanation of the morality of human acts, the Catholic Catechism offers a sobering insight concerning a wrong exercise of human freedom. And I quote, mortal sin is a radical possibility of human freedom, as is love itself, end quote. It properly insists that authentic human freedom cannot be realized in decisions made against God and against what is good, because it is, and I quote, patterned on God's freedom. Many people are looking for the path to happiness and freedom today. It's a natural and supernatural longing. However, we live in an age which espouses a notion of freedom of choice as a power to do whatever one desires without reference to any evaluative or objective norm outside of a kind of self-constructed individualistic compass that goes nowhere. This view is evident in every behavior that treats the human person as some thing to be used rather than someone, a gift, to be received. And it does not free us, fulfill us, or make us happy. Freedom has a moral constitution. Only in choosing what is true and noble and good and beautiful can we go forward. How do we view human freedom? How are we using our human freedom. The psalmist sings his song to Israel, telling them to pass on the goodness of God and his wonderful deeds to their children. He sings, they should be sure to tell their own children and should put their trust in God, never forgetting God's great deeds, always keeping his commands, and not like their ancestors, be a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation weak of purpose, their spirit fickle toward God. For those of us who have children, do we regularly tell them of the goodness of God? Do we tell them what he has done for us? Oh, I know they may not seem to hear the message, but the seed of faith is being planted in their souls and the Lord himself will water and nurture it. And I ask, when was the last time you told your children what the Lord had done for you? The Catechism of the Catholic Church explains that, and I quote, through the sacraments of Christian initiation, man receives the new life of Christ. Now we carry this life in earthen vessels and it remains hidden with Christ in God. We are still in our earthly tent, subject to suffering, illness, and death. And the Catechism continues, this new life as a child of God can be weakened and even lost by sin. Goes on, the Lord Jesus Christ, physician of our souls and bodies, who forgave the sins of the paralytic, and restored him to bodily health, has willed that his church continue in the power of the Holy Spirit, his work of healing and salvation, even among her own members. This is the purpose of the two sacraments of healing, the sacrament of penance and the sacrament of the anointing of the sick." End quote. This wonderful gospel account of the healing of the paralytic is not only a physical miracle, which it is, but it's a framework for understanding how we are called to live our lives and how our choices can lead us to true freedom or to slavery. In paragraph 1734, the Catechism explains, and again I quote, the choice to disobey and do evil is an abuse of freedom and leads to the slavery of sin. 
It cites the Apostle Paul's letter to the Romans. In other words, sin spiritually paralyzes us. Jesus sets us free. And in his words, and these are Jesus' words, I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. A slave is not a permanent member of the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. When was the last time you went to confession?